I got really serious about it 1991-92. At the time, I was a rock musician in Philadelphia. This is an old Black Sabbath song called Danger Zone. It's on uh, the seventh star. I had a passing interest ever since I was a kid in the Loch Ness Monster. And all of a sudden, I just uh, found myself being less interested in playing music and more interested in uh, the question of lake monsters and sea serpents. Yeah. The real pivotal moment for me was I was at the library in Philadelphia looking for books about the Loch Ness Monster and blundered up on Joe Zarsinski's book about Champ and decided to read it. I, I was aware of the, the Mansi photograph, but I was not aware of the extensive history going back to the 1800s and further back of, of sightings of the Lake Champlain monster. I really wanted to seriously get involved in actively doing something about it, and I couldn't really afford to move to Scotland, but I could afford to move to Vermont, so I just decided, you know, what the hell, I'll just move up there and start doing it. What we're going to devote the program to today is to try to figure out what champ might be the different kind of animals. And I observed uh, this object behind me in the picture. This is a drawing I did right after it happened. It's hump-like object with a, a fin-looking object coming up out of the middle of it. I had been asked to review a little book called uh, Bigfoot of the Blues. And uh, we paid uh, an unannounced visit to some of the principal characters there. And one of them, Paul Freeman, uh, had quite a collection of footprint casts, which I was very interested in seeing. And then Paul showed me a number of casts. There, many of them were, were very impressive. I was asking lots of questions. And he said, well, you obviously know a lot about footprints. Would you like to see some fresh tracks? And I just, what do you mean? And he said, well, I found some just this morning. And when, when you drove up, I was just, uh, I just gotten out of the car, had been up in the foothills and found some of the first tracks of the spring. And I just thought, what a coincidence. How could you possibly have known that we were coming? We made a quick trip up into the foothills. We took a look, look at these. It was an extensive line of tracks, 35, 45 individual footprints. I was left scratching my head. Uh, this was uh, amazing. These were extremely clear. They had to have been laid down the night before or early that morning. And uh, I mean, at one point, literally, the, the hair sort of stirred up on my neck as the realization sort of sank in that an animal walked by here just last night. You know. uh, that sort of set the hook. At that point, the wheels were already turning. What, what are the implications if I pursue this? Do I go out on a limb? Do I uh, redirect my research, uh, or a, a portion of my research anyway, to this uh, end? Well, in March of 1960, I saw a film called Half Human. And it was about the reports of a hairy creature in Himalayan-like mountains. And people went out and they killed one of them and then they captured the young and they took it back. And It was a science fiction film, but it was done in the documentary style. And I found out later that the film by Ishiro Hondu, he had been a documentary filmmaker and that was his first fiction film. And we know him now today because he went on to make Godzilla. But then I went to school the next week and I said to my teachers, what's this about the abominable snowman? And all the teachers said, don't waste your time. It's not real. Don't study it. So, of course, being an early question authority kind of person, I read everything I could on the abominable snowman, quickly found out that there was a Bigfoot type being in the United States, a Yeti type being that was called Bigfoot in the United States, and started investigating things like Black Panther sightings in Illinois, uh, little ape-like creatures in the swamps, and and started corresponding with people like Ivan Sanderson. It just snowballed from there. This is the uh, Crookston, Minnesota Bigfoot, which was actually created by Curtis Christensen from Wisconsin in the 1990s. And Curtis, what he wanted to do is he wanted to create a Bigfoot to just see how big an eight foot tall Bigfoot would be that weighs about 400, 500 pounds. Since most houses in Maine are only eight feet tall, and this guy now is eight and a half feet tall with the base, I had to actually cut a hole in the roof. I put him in the house, but I didn't want to cut a hole in the ceiling. So. <laughs> you might say I really started when I was eight years old. 
I started out really uh, as a reader. I used to get the old Boy's Life magazines. You know, as a kid, I used to uh, see the color comic section they had in the Space Conquerors, and I started keeping the old magazines. Believe it or not, I condensed a lot of this uh, some years ago. There's actually much more. This is about 40 years of collecting rare books, journals, for correspondence, stuff I got to refile. My collection of popular mechanics, popular science, unique information. I got better collection than the libraries around here. My first book. I sold so far 100 copies. <laughs> I'm not going to be rich.